3D printers have a serious issue with innovation, but it's not what you might think and I need to bring it to your attention. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. Now, I've been in the desktop 3D printing game for a very long time. Pretty much since its inception with the creation of the RepRap project and those very early attempts of low-cost desktop FDM machines. Although I was lucky enough to access 3D printers through spaces such as the Robots and Dinosaurs Hackerspace here in Sydney and the amazing UTS Industrial Design Workshop that I miss very much, it wasn't until 2012 that I could finally afford my first personal 3D printer, the UP Mini from Tier Time. In fact, it's this machine right here. It cost me almost one and a half thousand Australian dollars back then, but other than the damaged road clip in shipping, it worked perfectly right out of the box. In fact, if it wasn't for one small damaged part in the machine right now, it would still be working perfectly today. Because of my experience with tier time printers, I was the local repair center for them for some time, and I got to see the inner workings of these machines. What I observed were subtle tweaks to the design over a period of time. For example, the original UP had a heat bed cartridge. Yes, a single cartridge for an entire heat bed. A terrible idea by today's standards. And a long nichrome wire, which flexed during operation. It inevitably broke after a period of time, so tier time swapped these out down the line for a flex PCB to make it more reliable. Similarly, the UP Mini was tweaked with new hot ends, which heated up faster and was less bulky. They also implemented new wire harnesses for easy assembly or repair, and even color-coded plugs for the main control board. What's important to note here is that side by side, my original UP Mini with one of the first serial numbers would look identical next to one of the last of its kind off the production line, though internally, they were substantially different. This improvement of hardware products which are already on the market isn't some kind of new practice isolated to 3D printers, but I have noticed a nasty trend which is pushing this idea beyond what I would consider reasonable. Shipping hardware products with serious flaws and using feedback from customers to fix later versions of that very same product under the same name and not really telling anyone you're making those changes. And I think this book is partly to blame. I am passionate about design, but I'm also quite passionate about business. And The Lean Startup by Eric Reese is a book which is heavily recommended to entrepreneurs and startups as a must read. To go to a very broad summary of the book, Eric was a co-founder of IMVU. Yeah, do you remember that? I actually had an account for a very short period of time. But what he found was that instead of spending money and time internally to perfect their product, they would instead ship or go live with unfinished or buggy software and use their own customers to do the testing for them, helping them to rapidly innovate and improve the product and hone it to become something the customers wanted at a fraction of the cost or time it would take to do the same testing internally. Many of you gamers will now know this as beta testing or even alpha releases. Games are released unfinished and full of bugs for purpose of beta testing and you go into them knowing full well that the experience probably won't be flawless and you help the game devs in the process to polish and finish the game. And if this kind of thing sounds interesting to you then I definitely do recommend reading this book. It goes into a lot more depth and look, he's not wrong, it does work. However, Here's the rub. You can update software, you can roll back versions, and you can do all of this with no additional cost to the consumer, no matter where they are, almost instantly. But you can't do that with hardware. Let's return to the Up Mini. Sure, it was the first of its kind. It didn't have any fancy features, but it did what it said it would on the tin. It 3D printed. It worked. It was tested before going out. However, over the last few years, culminating in an incredibly accelerated trend over the last six months, I've noticed something kind of nasty. First version 3D printers don't always just work, and in some cases represent serious oversights in quality control, design, and safety. So what happens 
if an early adopter purchases one of these machines and finds out it doesn't just print as they expected. Well, in my opinion, it could go one of two ways at this point. They could give up and ditch the machine or take it upon themselves to fix the issues, buy new parts, print upgrades and even reflash firmware. And yes, there is a third option of warranty in some cases, but look, if you're purchasing from a different country, then this is likely to be a long, painful and potentially costly exercise. Not to mention that most companies simply won't warranty a kit 3D printer. In short, the customer is doing the R&D the company should have done in the first place, free of charge on their watch. And the company, unless they're a complete scam, will take those upgrades on board, replace the bad parts that have gotten a bad reputation and take on community improvements and ship out a better improved machine under the same name to new customers, which is great for the new customers. But what about the people who bought the original machine? This is a huge issue because the 3D printing community is quite tight and many of us make purchasing decisions based off direct community feedback. I know for a fact I have sold hundreds of 3D printers for companies all around the world through my reviews here on Makers News and for a long time I believed those reviews to be a fair representation of the product you would receive should you decide to make a purchase. But I don't really feel that's the case anymore. For some examples, when I was shipped my JG Aurora A5, it had 3D printed rod and motor mount supports, which were damaged during shipping. Later versions were replaced with metal supports, which is how they should have been in the first place. But that didn't help me. And inversely, my experiences with the Chongxi X1 leads me to recommend it to many people as a great budget 3D printer. But since then, there has been many reports from you guys of a poorly fitted Y-axis with a bed that just sort of bounces around and isn't properly constrained. And my review of the Ender 3 was somewhat of a middle child. First version Ender 3s had better PTFE couplers and a 3D printed mains power cover, according to people that I've talked to. However, my units had issues with those same couplers, but at least it did have an injection molded mains power cover. But now, apparently, Ender 3s are shipping with better parts again, as well as a removable print surface, which is substantially different to the machine I reviewed not, not too long ago, all under the same name. So quite frankly, if you order an Ender 3, I have no idea what you're gonna receive. And look, don't get me wrong, product improvement is awesome and really important, but it's the randomness and rate of change that is really scaring me. I accepted delivery of my Ender 3 on May 31st and the review was made public on July the 3rd. Honestly, that's one of the fastest realistic turnarounds for a proper 3D printer review you could expect from a channel like this. You need time to review a 3D printer and it's already out of date. Something here isn't adding up. And to push the point even further, almost every review I've done in the last 12 months that was negative in one form or another has been met with replies claiming we've fixed all these issues already as if that somehow excuses the shipment of a machine with garbage hardware. It's not going to help some kid who saved up all his pocket money to buy his first 3D printer if you've fixed all the issues after he bought the printer. And I get it, for many of you guys, 3D printing is a hobby and performing upgrades can be part of the fun, but 3D printing is also a tool for creativity. And personally, that's what it's always been for me. And you can't realistically expect someone new to the scene to know what's going on if they get a machine with poor quality or faulty hardware. They're most likely going to give up and I am not okay with that. Personally, back in 2012, if I got a crap faulty machine instead of my experiences with the Up Mini, I might have well done the same. So where am I going with this rant? Because yes, this is kind of a rant, but it is one with good intentions. Let me start with the manufacturers. First impressions count and foster long-term brand loyalty. Rushing out a new machine to influencers or early adopters has the potential to backfire massively. Because although I can't comment for others, I will tear your machine apart if it's got problems. No hesitation, just as much as I will praise it if it's awesome. 
and I get it. As a company, skipping much of the in-house testing saves time and money. But in my opinion, it would be safer and more profitable to ensure your machine works really well and really tighten down on that quality testing from suppliers at the start. Even if it's a kit, yes, you do need good QC. Please consider doing this instead of sending an influencer like myself a steaming pile of parts that someone called a 3D printer and then we proceed to recommend no one ever touch it even if you improve the machine later on because the damage is already done. And secondly, to those of you who want to buy 3D printers, really, really consider what you're getting into before making a purchase. A lot of this testing on the consumer stuff is related to kits because it's a lot easier to let poor quality control slip when the customer themselves assembles the machine. It's a lot easier to blame them than to blame poor quality parts. And remember, a brand new 3D printer from a new company is taking a huge punt. And yes, this will definitely include Kickstarter 3D printers. If you're okay with the prospect of a machine sucking and the potential to have to spend a lot of money on expensive upgrades, then fine, go for it. It is a gamble. And if you enjoy the process, by all means, However, if you're aiming to use a 3D printer from the get-go as a tool to empower your creativity, then I don't recommend being an early adopter. Buy something that's well-established and well-known to the community to work great out of the box without any real serious modifications and make sure it does have a good positive community around it, even if it's small. So guys, I would love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Are you okay with companies applying these beta testing philosophies to hardware products? or not. And hey, while you're here, if you're not already subscribed, maybe give it a shot. It is my aim to empower your creativity through technology. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye.